Welcome folks. Uh, it's time for part two of this uh, CMFI or Central Multiport Fuel Injection uh, System on this 95, uh, 1995 uh, GMC Safari minivan. Uh, in the first video I posted, which is uploading at the moment, um, I was showing an oxygen sensor that was all covered in carbon and that was uh, from this particular engine here. So this is uh, like I say, part two, the first part I had mentioned and show, showed you on the workbench inside the workshop, there the, the top cover, or the the, um, the upper manifold. This is the lower manifold here, the lower plenum, that bolts to the the um, cylinder heads, and it fits down into the uh, the valley of the top of the, uh, the engine block. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyways, this is what you're faced with once you take that upper uh, half off that I was showing you, that top aluminum thing with the six runners or lobes if you will and uh, this is what you'll be faced with now previous to doing this uh, what made me think there was some kind of a leak inside here I'll explain these lines and how the fuel injection system works uh, momentarily but uh, I, I pulled you remember the um, intake manifold uh, tuning valve it uses two torx screws to remove just undo the wiring harness two wire wiring harness you pull the two torx screws out of there then it just pulls straight up. It's all ringed in there so it doesn't leak. Then with a mirror and a flashlight, I looked down in here and I noticed there were some shiny spots of aluminum. And what they're always seeing on the internet and everywhere else is watch for these shiny spots with this aluminum lower half here. So I'll, uh, I'll zoom in a little bit and I've got a little helper here. got an LED flashlight. Hopefully uh, it'll comply. And uh, we'll shine it down here and maybe get a zoom in of this thing. Uh, I don't usually work too good with hands out in the open like this. Usually this uh, camera is mounted and doing its thing above the workbench, but if you notice here, uh, I'll try to leave some black in there too. Uh, let's see. Off to the left here you can see where the, uh, air, the, air, um, the air goes down into here. Right? It's all black and carboned up. Now if you have a fuel leak of any kind, you'll notice it's just like sandblasting almost. It, it really when the engine's creating a lot of vacuum and then the you know the fuel is puddling down in there like we had a leaky uh, or I had rather a leaky fu um, fuel pressure regulator that's the new one there it's a dormant adjustable on the end there's a torque screw in there they even supply the little torx bit to make the adjustment on the fuel pressure and I'm going to do a fuel pressure che uh, check test with the gauge I have here in a few minutes but I just wanted you to, to know what to be looking out for. So on the other side here, you'll notice it's just all carbon black. And there's no leaks on this side, really. Um, I'm not really sure why there's any shiny down there. I guess maybe it's just a, something that it does. Who knows? It's been sitting out here during the cold months and stuff, so it could be a bit of condensation acting a bit on that side. I don't know. I really can't say for sure. But you can definitely see the big wash and aluminum all polished up nice and shiny. That's due to a fuel leak. And on the end of, uh, I'll show you the fuel pressure regulator here. Just give me a second. This is what it looks like here. It's got a filter screen and a couple of O-rings on it here. This is the old one, probably an original GM one. Um, there's a little hole in the end. It's actually subject to manifold vacuum when it's oper engine's operating. It lowers fuel pressure up to as much as, so oh, about 10 PSI. It'll drop the fuel pressure once you're at idle speed. Um, so this one, it started dribbling out of here, so I'd, I'd uh, key up the ignition. It primes for about two seconds, and then I'd see a little bit of fuel dribbling out of here. And so while the engine was running, this diaphragm inside here the, the, that regulates the fuel pressure probably has got a crack or a little hole or something in it. I might even open this up and see what's inside there, see what's caused it to fail. But anyways, once it starts to leak, it's only supposed to be air that acts in that hole and uh, creates a pressure differential, if you will air pressure. So that started to leak, got fuel, made like a, a mini pressure washer and that's why it's all clean in there. So I just the other day I installed a new pressure uh, adjustable pressure uh, regulator, fuel pressure regulator, and adjusted it to, um, spec was 60 psi plus or minus 2 psi. I set it for 62 just to see what it would do. Worst case scenario if it doesn't happen properly once I button this up and, and it's idling with too much or too little fuel pressure I'll have to buy another gasket take it apart and make the adjustment because it's all internal on this one okay so there's what the old one looks like when they're not installed and that's the installed one right here all right let's move on now um, I was mentioning in the first video 
about the uh, the holes. This is where the uh, the air goes down into. Like after, if um, the top was on here, it would be taking the air from the air clean, air filter housing, and then back into those two big runners that I showed you that were round on one end and square on the other. Drops the uh, the air into either side of here, and depending on what that. Uh, dual split valve thing is doing. Um, the air just essentially goes up into the lobe or runner. I like to call it a lobe for some reason, but it's the air 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 chamber runner, I guess you'd say. It goes up from there and into its corresponding hole. Okay, it's gasketed on there, so it has to go into three on each side. And this this side with these pickups here would go to those other three on the other side. So um that's basically how it works just for the air supply. Um, there is one fuel injector in here. Let's see. Get my magic marker. Pointer rather. Right underneath this uh, this um, connect electrical connector is what they call a maxi injector. It's one big fuel injector. Probably almost the size of uh, a throttle body uh, a single injector. But underneath I believe it's got six holes in it to supply these tubes. And each of these tubes here there's three per side, and that's why they call it a spider. This one only has six legs. A real spider in, is not really an insect. It has eight legs, but we got six here. And there's the poppet nozzle. It goes down inside here, and it clips in. And inside there should be a, a spring-loaded ball bearing. I believe the trigger on it is about 43 psi. So if your fuel pressure drops lower than 43 psi, it probably won't inject any fuel into the uh, into the heads on the intake side there. Okay. So here's your, believe it or not, they call this a nut kit. These two nylon fuel lines that lead up to the injection, injection unit, rather. They have a tendency when they get older, they get hardened, and they might split or get a hole in them or something, and they'll start to leak when under pressure. So you got to keep an eye on that. When they get old, that could be a possible leaking point. Then there's the injector unit itself. It's made of plastic, apparently. If anything goes wrong there, you get a leak there. So you're looking for this polished aluminum wherever there's a leak, and it's only on this side here. Turned out the only leak I could find was coming out of the fuel pressure regulator, so I replaced it. So, anyways, that's basically what it is here. Is everything is plastic or nylon? Like I say, they call it the nut kit. This, this is the fuel in pressure side, and the return after it exceeds pressure in the, in the fuel pressure regulator, the excess pressure will bleed back in through this hose and goes back to the gas tank. Okay, a little bit warm in here today, actually. Um, Closed all the windows up in here and everything so I wouldn't get all the um, noise from outside. It's getting pretty warm. Anyways, let's run that uh, fuel pressure check. It's going to be hard to do, but I'll I'll do what I can here. Got it all hooked up already. Keys in the ignition switch, batteries hooked up. You're playing with 60 to maybe as high as 70 pounds per square inch, so you got to wear safety glasses. Have a fire extinguisher um, really close. So you can grab that thing if something goes wrong. Never start your engine when it's apart like this. It's only the first position with the key to the run position only to supply uh, battery voltage to the fuel pump. We don't want to start this thing. Otherwise you're going to have some real nasty stuff going on. So safety first. All right. So if I can, <clears throat> if I can adjust this uh, newly acquired fuel pressure gauge so it doesn't give me glare. It's, it's quite sunny outside right now. So I'll try to find a, a place. So we're going to key it up just to the run position. And we're going to see what the gauge has to tell us. Let's see if I can get just right. It goes to 69 and a half. About 69 and it drops to... I was aiming for 62 yesterday when I set it. But for some reason this it shouldn't really bleed down for a long, long time. We're talking half an hour to an hour. This one bleeds down very slowly. It's not a real concern to me because uh, when the engine's running, as long as there's fuel pressure, adequate fuel pressure to make it work, and it's within spec while it's running, you might have, uh, say, something faulty at the fuel pump end where there's a check valve kind of an arrangement. I haven't really looked too closely into it yet, but if you keep an eye on the gauge, I'm not going to leave it on that long, but it's holding pretty decent. Um, when I had the leaking original um, fuel pressure regulator in there, this thing only took, uh, oh, I think it was dropping about a pound a PSI rather, about every second or two. It was coming down pretty quick. 
it was actually when you keyed it up like this with the pressure it would actually come down and you could see it dropping pretty quick it was only a it was only a not really a bad leak but I mean when the engines running under vacuum and any any fuel puddling in the lower intake manifold you know with the heat of the engine and, and the uh, vacuum then it gets uh, you know drawn up as uh, fuel into the in, in, uh, air intake tract only the only fuel should be going into the poppet nozzles which I showed you those little nylon lines connected to so this one's actually holding pretty good considering you know it's not dropping quick at all it's no concern if it dropped a little quicker I still wouldn't be concerned as long as once um, once I get this thing buttoned up everything uh, you know that uh, upper intake manifold or upper plenum half um, put in with a new gasket all the sensors and actuators vacuum hoses connected back up so it's in running condition I'm going to do another video and uh, show us all what's uh, what it's actually going to do when it's idling and maybe even rev it up a little bit but like I say it was just so rich yeah, this is it's dropping slowly it's not it's not a big concern like I was saying so I'll key it up one more time before I say goodbye to you it only primes for two seconds they're getting 69 pounds and it drops to 62 and then it starts to fall from there let's see where's the glare I gotta try to keep the glare off the face of the gauge otherwise it's all for nothing so like I say in the spec, I think it was a Haynes manual I got it out of, and um, 60 PSI, key on, engine not running, and that 60 PSI plus or minus 2, 2 PSI minus or plus, like, and when it's idling, it can drop as much as uh, 10 PSI from your high reading here. So if I'm theoretically at 62 uh, PSI, I shouldn't get any lower than uh, 52 psi and I worked out some figures with uh, the specifications that I was looking at there and uh, as long as your fuel pressure when you're idling doesn't drop below 48 psi you should be good to go like I say I don't know if I'd already mentioned but the poppet nozzles I think they required about 43 psi just so that the the pressure could overcome the spring that was applying pressure to the ball bearing in the end of the poppet so 48 is uh, Hello, that gives you about 5 psi above pop it opening pressure if I get it right that is so if someone can tell me any different on these engines whether the pop it actuation pressure is 43 psi or not please feel free to leave a comment okay so as you can see it's behaving itself pretty good it hasn't really dropped much so and I also the other day when I uh, set it up the pressure it's adjustable pressure uh, fuel pressure regulator um, Adjusted it several times, see where it would end up, and uh, I settled on 62 once uh, the two-second uh, fuel pump prime was uh, finished with. So it's holding pretty good, I'd say. So um, that'll hold us on this video for now, and uh, I'm just trying to think if I left anything out. Uh, basically covered most of the lines, the poppets, fuel pressure regulator, the maxi injector, where the air goes, <laughs> where the fuel shouldn't go. Yeah, on that uh, clean aluminum side, just to the right of the gauge here, where it's all shiny aluminum, nice and clean, new looking, it was there was puddles of fuel down in there, maybe oh I don't know, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch deep, if that. And it wasn't as serious. Like the the vehicle would still run, the engine would run, but you could tell it's just not running clean. Uh, it would falter a bit at idle, and it would wouldn't really run crisp like it should. It was just like being lazy, which is what a rich engine when it run, runs a rich air, too rich of an air fuel ratio. They get kind of lazy. It doesn't really hurt it too much unless you get a big backfire or something. So she's holding here just over 58 psi after that amount of time. So and I don't see any leaks. I'll go over this thing once I shut the the camera off and collect up some of my tools and whatnot. And I'll look around for any leaks and leave this pressure pressure holding as long as it it wants to. And uh, I'll monitor it a second time. I did it the other day there, and I didn't see any leaks once I put the new. Uh, fuel pressure regulator in there. So there you have it for this video folks. Uh, thanks for watching. Alright, until next time, be safe, take care, and have yourself a good one. Bye for now.